Good afternoon and greetings from Edinburgh. I'm Colin Morrison and I'm sorry I'm not able to be with you today. I do wish you all ever success with the World Conference. In my 26 year career with the Institute, I've only managed to attend one World Conference, which just happened to be the last one in 2015 in South Korea. I did have the opportunity and the privilege to meet many of the delegation members from CIBN and I'm sure that you'll be hosting a tremendous event. However, through the wonders of modern technology, I'm delighted to share some thoughts on reprofessionalizing banking through continuous education. I'm speaking to you today from two perspectives, or what we like to call in Scotland, I'm wearing two hats. The first hat I'm wearing refers to my role as President of the European Banking and Financial Services Training Association, or EBTN, as it's more widely known. The second hat is, of course, my role as Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Education at the Charter Bank Institute. I will share perspectives from both organisations and do hope this will form a good basis for discussion between Ted and his colleagues on the panel. Speaking as someone who is passionate about education and personal development banking, it was a great personal privilege to be elected as President of EBTN last June at our AGM in Athens. I only took over officially as President on 1st January this year and the role is still quite new and challenging but of course exciting for me. EBTN is a not-for-profit association registered in Brussels and it consists of around 40 members from Europe and beyond. Our vision as a body is to promote professional education and training in banking in the European financial services sector. The key objectives of EBTN are to promote the ethical, professional and technical development of banking employees. We do this by developing common European frameworks of standards for education and training. These frameworks of standards are supported by implementing systems for accreditation, validation and certificate of training and education. At EBTN we also aim to add value to our members by facilitating the sharing of good practice through the organisation of events and projects and promoting research within the financial services sector. In recent years, EBTN has been involved in many projects which has involved members working together to undertake research and development on several vocational education and training related themes in the sector. Projects have covered such areas as application of the European Credit System for VET or ECVET to training provision and banking, creating a new the system of certification for competences in the EU financial services sector and promoting the application of the European Qualifications Framework or EQF to the FS sector. These are just some of the examples of the types of projects we've undertaken and the above examples have led to the creation of EBTN's Triple E standard. The ambition of EBTN with Triple E project was to help rebuild trust in the banking sector through the creation of transparent professional qualification frameworks. The AAA standard builds on previous projects undertaken by EBTN and references the main EU lifelong learning instruments, namely EQF, ECVET and Equivet. The AAA standard was launched in September 2015 and it is a quality standard for qualifications in the banking sector. It specifies how a non-formal qualification should be designed and executed. It's important to stress that this standard is not a certification for individuals, but an accreditation recognitions for institutions of the quality of qualifications they provide. We see this as an important contribution to restoring trust and confidence in the sector by demonstrating that the sector has highly qualified employees. The Triple E standard is composed of three pillars. The first is the infrastructure pillar, detailed infrastructure required to support the qualification. The second is the body pillar, giving details on the outcomes, units and levels, etc. And finally, the third is the feature pillar, detailing the various features such as relevance and fairness. We do see many rewards and benefits to the various stakeholders in Triple E, including employees, employers, regulators, customers and education and training bodies. EBTN has now established a triple E accreditation committee and the first institute has been accredited 
with more in the pipeline over the next few months. We do feel the Triple E standard will have a very positive impact on helping reprofessionalise in banking through continuous education. We've been now to put on my other hat at the Chartered Bank Institute. I'm sure that many of you will know that the Chartered Bank Institute, formerly the Chartered Institute of Bankers in Scotland, is the oldest professional banking institute in the world. The institute was founded in 1875 to improve the qualifications of those engaged in banking and to raise their status and influence. In essence, to develop a banking industry based on ethical and professional competence that customers and society could trust and rely upon. Now, over 142 years later, our overall objective hasn't changed. The world has changed, but the Institute remains true to its founding principles, albeit the scale and scope of our operations has increased exponentially over the years in line with modern day demands. I'm also delighted that our relevance extends well beyond our traditional home in Scotland. We are now recognised as the definitive professional membership body for bankers from the UK. We are also a rapidly expanding membership body. Just over five years ago we had only some 8,500 members, with the majority of them in Scotland. We now have over 30,000 members, most of them across the UK, but including members and students from 59 countries. More individuals than ever before are studying with the Institute or with one of our accredited learning partners, demonstrating their own personal and professional equipment to meeting those standards. Over the past year, we have welcomed nearly 9,000 new students from a wide range of banks and financial institutions across the UK and from around the world, and nearly 10,000 individuals have achieved a qualification. I am equally proud that we now, for the first time in our history, have a majority of female members and through our campaign, the Changing Face of Professionalism, we've been looking at ways to support our female members to progress in their professional careers. Over the past five years, the Institute has evolved from being a local provider of bank training and education and qualification to become the recognised professional and educational standard setter for bankers in the UK. Following a long campaign by the Institute to highlight the importance of enhancing and sustaining professional standards in banking, I feel the tide has turned, that our industry is starting to re-establish a level of professionalism we can be proud of. And there's also support from regulators and policymakers in the UK for our work. The reason for this ever-growing support for the Charter Bank Institute and for gaining our banking qualifications is quite simple. We all know how important it is for banks and bankers to gain public confidence and trust. Becoming a chartered banker is a public demonstration of a long-term commitment to the highest standards of professionalism on which customers and communities' confidence and trust may be founded. That is why we have a code of professional conduct for chartered bankers. A code which sets out the fundamental ethical and professional standards on which we believe banking must be founded. The topic we are focusing on in this session is reprofessionalism in banking through continuous education. And the Charter Bank Institute is playing a vital role in promoting this by continuing to lead the professional standards agenda in the UK. We can clearly demonstrate this through our campaign for banks to be invest further in staff development to make sure the culture of prudence, professionalism and stewardship promoted by the Institute is embedded in the way they do business. However, it's only in the last five years that policymakers, regulators and the banking industry itself have really begun to identify culture and standards in banking as high priority issues. Alongside the work of the Institute in this area, we have also the good work of the Charter Banker Professional Standards Board, or CBPSB, which the Institute led the establishment of in 2011 to develop and implement industry-wide professional standards covering conduct and expertise for individual bankers in the UK for the first time. In October 2011, the CBPSB published the Charter Banker Code of Professional Conduct, to which all member banks have subscribed, and which encompasses approximately 70% of the UK banking workforce. In July 2012, the CS CBPSB launched its first standard, the Foundation Standard for Professional Bankers. Nearly 250,000 bankers globally, including 173,000 in the UK, 
achieved the foundation standard in 2015. As well as increasing the numbers to achieve the foundation standard, some PSB firms have now started working towards the leadership standard, which is the CBPSB's second standard. And we expect a number of senior individuals to meet this exacting standard in 2017. And internationally, an emerging alliance of bank institutes is developing voluntary global standards, mostly around education. International regulators, though, could do more to encourage and support the development of global standards of ethical and professional competence. A global approach has worked elsewhere, most notably post Enron by the accountancy profession, and I know that you'll be talking about these global standards later in this conference. So now is the time not to be shy. As professionals, bankers share a positive social purpose to accomplish more than simply maximising shareholder returns. We share a responsibility to set the ethical tone for economic life. At a time when ethics in business and public life are under scrutiny, following serious lapses of our organisations as diverse as hospitals, car manufacturers and sports associations, let banking lead, not follow. As well as our standard setting rule, the Charter Bank Institute is the main provider of professional banking qualifications in the UK. We are continually revising and refactoring our Charter Banker qualification and our Charter Banker MBA programme, making sure that bankers develop into the future leaders of the banking industry, the banking profession and have the comprehensive knowledge of banking required to ensure the success and sustainability of their institutions, the industry and the economy as a whole. Perhaps not surprisingly, the Charter Banker programme itself focuses on core banking skills in credit, risk and banking operations, and of course professionalism and ethics. But as individual careers develop, they will often wish to develop management and leadership skills. Before the banking crisis in 2008, it was probably fair to say that the MBA was seen as a must-have qualification for many senior bankers. Pre-crisis MBA programmes may indeed have produced great leaders, but it seems to me that at least some of the previous generation of MBAs led the banking industry into disrepute. It's not enough to be a great leader. Senior bankers must be professionally and technically competent bankers as well. Bankers first and foremost. That is why we launched a unique Charter Banker MBA programme in partnership with Bangor University in 2011. The Charter Banker MBA combines both Charter Banker subjects with traditional MBA subjects, developing ethical and professional leaders in who employees, customers and regulators can have confidence and trust. Great leaders who are also really technically professional bankers. And I'm sure that Ted, your session host from Bangor, will tell you more about the programme. Charter Banker is a world-class qualification, but it's more than just a qualification. Becoming a Charter Banker is the beginning of a lifelong commitment to ethical professionalism that must be maintained throughout one's career to continue to call oneself a Charter Banker. To remain a Charter Banker, individuals have to agree to be bound by the Charter Banker Code of Professional Conduct and to complete a minimum of 35 hours of CPD, including ethics refresher training each year. And all Charter Bankers are expected to act as positive role models for others follow them in the banking profession, providing the tone from the top, the tone from the middle, we expect to see. Demonstrated to customers, colleagues and others, that a banker is technically competent, ethically professional and someone to be trusted. If as bankers, we can genuinely be stewards of our customer finances and trust professional advisors, then we too can demonstrate a deep and sustained commitment to preserving our customers' financial health and wealth. Developing and sustaining such trend clearly has implications not only for individual bankers, but also for banks, for the banking industry overall, for regulators and policymakers, and indeed for society as a whole. And has implications too for the Charter Banker Institute and for other professional bodies who play key roles in fostering professional commitment. For individuals, the professional commitment begins at an early stage in one's career and remains throughout it involves adhering to the Charter Banker Code of Professional Conduct, developing the knowledge and skills you need as a professional banker, and becoming a Charter Banker to demonstrate a public commitment to the highest ethical and professional standards, 
many of one's colleagues and future generations of bankers and doing all you can to promote a professional ethos within your own working circle, whatever your level of seniority. Most recently, the Institute has been closely involved with the latest developments in apprenticeships in the UK and has assisted in the development of new employer-led trailblazer apprenticeship standards in banking and wider financial services. As one of a relatively small and select group of professional bodies to be granted endpoint assessment status for apprenticeships, the Institute is now responsible for assessing standards for apprenticeships and evaluating individuals against these high levels of achievement. The Institute is delighted to be working with employers on apprenticeships and proudly welcomes the opportunity to broaden the appeal of careers in banking. Whilst unlike in many other professions, it is not a statutory requirement to hold a professional qualification, the new senior management and certification regimes in the UK introduced in 2016 will do much to encourage the uptake of relevant professional banking qualifications and our institute is in the vanguard of helping banks and bankers meet these new requirements. Put simply, becoming a chartered banker and maintaining your professional status through CPD will help most individuals meet the regulator's expectations. We want to go beyond these though, to meet the expectations for our customers and our communities. Independent research commissioned from YouGov in March 2015 showed that two-thirds of customers in the UK expect bankers to be professionally qualified and that the professional qualification they trust above all others is charter banker. What we're working for is a much broader popular acceptance that banking is not simply utility but is a profession. Banking is not a get-rich-quick scheme for bankers and sellers or their customers. For society as a whole is a much more profound purpose as the essential facilitator of modern economic life. In conclusion, reprofessionals in banking through continuous education is important for all the reasons I've outlined, but it's just one of the things that needs to happen for banking to become a profession again. To reach this ultimate goal, I would suggest three further things. Firstly, a culture of stewardship, prudence and professionalism must be inculcated in banks. Individuals should be encouraged to gain and to value professional status. And banking needs to develop and embed professional norms and keep them. By achieving these aims and doing so, creating a culture of professionalism amongst individual bankers, public confidence and trust to industry will over time be restored. However, at the same time, in doing all this, we need to continue the progress that has been made in restoring colleagues sense of professional pride in a socially purposeful banking profession. For how can we ask our customers to be proud of what we do unless we are first proud of what we do ourselves? Thank you and I do hope you enjoy the following discussion that will follow and the rest of your conference. Goodbye and over to you Ted.